Hello everyone, welcome again to Mike's SAS Tutorials. This is Lesson 5 and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to reduce data sets and also how to clean them up. Um, I'm going to start with our data main as we've worked with uh, every lesson so far that has three variables x, y, and z and two observations. The first has the 1, 2, 3 for the first uh, three, uh, three variables and the second has 7, 8, 9 for those same variables and I'm going to run this and show you a few things to consider when you're first working with a data set. Now the first thing you always want to do with a data set is to check out the contents of the data set using this proc contents. Proc contents basically gives you an overall summary of what a data set contains. At the very begin very bottom of this we have our alphabetic listing of the variables and I want to uh, show your attention or call your attention to this uh, variable list right here, this x, y, and z. The x, y, and z represent the three variables that are in our data set and when we're dealing with a data set that is a full data set you're going to have all of the obs all of the variables and all of the observations. In this case we only have two. Uh, when you want to reduce a data set what you're essentially going to do is either get rid of some observations or get rid of some variables. The reason you want to do that is because when you're sending out an analytic data set or let's say um, maybe a uh, codified or what we call anonymized data set to somebody so that they can analyze it, you want to throw out some of the observations or some of the variables. Like for example, if you're dealing with patient data, you might want to throw out the patient's name or any other of the protected health uh, information that HIPAA might exclude one from looking at. Well, to reduce a data set, we can do it in two simple ways. The first is to use, or we can do it in two different places rather. We can do it in the data step using an if statement, or we can do it in a proc step using a where statement. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The first example here with the data reduced main, we're going to bring in our full main data set and we're going to reduce it using this if statement. What we're going to say is if our x value has a 1 in it, and if you remember from our last lesson, x is a, a pseudo ID variable, if we have patients that meet that criteria or that condition, we're going to show only those observations where x equals 1. If I print this original main, you can see here there's two observations, 1 and 2, and the x is only true uh, or sorry, only equal to one for one of those observations. So if we make sure that we reduce the data set only to those with the x equals one, we're only going to see that one observation. And so if I print out the reduced main, you can see that's the case. Now that was a very simple way, and because I have such simple data, it may not be as uh, it may be a little lackluster there. It may be not so. Uh, wowing I guess but you can see that it reduced the data and now the only data we're looking at is that data that meets this condition. We can do the same thing using a uh, procedure right away without having to bring in a new data set or create recreate the data set if we just use a where, where statement and this again is going to use a condition and the condition is going to be the same as x equals 1. If I do this proc print you're going to see I get the same results. And I did not have to work with a data step at all. So the two places, again, you can work in the in the data step right here, or you can work in the proc step like we did here. Now there are three other ways we can reduce, or we can, uh, re there are two other ways we can reduce data, and that's by using either a keep statement or a drop statement. A keep statement will not, will not act, act excuse me, will not act on the observations, it will act on the variables. And so here we have a new data set called data reduced main, and we're going to bring in our full data set. But now we're going to have this new called keep, and we're going to tell it we only want to keep the x variable, y variable, and we're throwing out, if you will, the z variable. We're not going to bother with the z at all. So if I run this, and showing you the original uh, data set how it looked. We had one, two, three variables right there and one, two observations right there. Now we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you that there's going to be 
only two variables. We have our x and we have our y. The z that was there before got thrown out because we told it we didn't want to keep it. So that's a way you can reduce the data in the data step using a keep statement. The other option is to do what we call a drop statement in the data step. Here what we do is we tell SAS all of the variables we do not want in our final data set. So if I were to say let's drop our Y variable using the original main data set brought in, what we're going to see is that only the X and Z variables are going to be included. So if I select this code and run it, and showing you again what the original data set looks like, we had the X, the Y, and the Z variables, now we're going to only have the X and the Z without the Y. And you can see that's the case here, X and Z. And that's because SAS dropped that Y variable that was in between, it's gone. You wanna be a little bit cautious when using the keep and drop statements because if you're working on the original data set and you haven't made any backups or you don't have it in a permanent location somewhere on your hard drive, then you will lose that data. So be very careful, I tend to just recreate the data sets if it's not too uh, large of a data set by just setting in the old one. And if you aren't familiar with the set statement, you can check out lesson four of this tutorial series and it has all you need to know about the set statement. Uh, the next part of this lesson is going to be talking about cleaning up data sets. And I like to work with clean data sets because it makes it a lot more uh, useful to me or a lot more uh, legible, readable, it just makes it look a little bit more organized. Um, the first thing I like to do is rename variables into something that makes a lot more sense in its own description, descriptive title. So for example, if we're having X, Y, and Z, these are kind of coded variable names, they don't make as much sense. So I'm going to rename them using this rename statement. The rename statement works just like the keep, drop, uh, label, a couple other statements in that you say you're going to rename the original variable name, set it equal to, and what you're going to have the new variable name be. You do not need to use a comma to go to the next variable. What I like to do is just go onto a new line so it's in this kind of pattern right here. But what you can also do is just say y equals and whatever your next uh, variable rename is going to be. And so now if I'm making this new data set called clean main, setting in my old original data set, I can rename the three variables into something that makes more sense for me. And in this case, we're going to have ID, month, and date. And I just brought this, I just made this up. It doesn't really have any, uh, it's not like Y and Z represent months or days in other data sets. It's just for the example here. Now, again, remember I said to use this proc contents when you want to look at a data set from the very beginning. If I show you again the contents of the original data set, we're going to see that the variables are X, Y, and Z. And again, we have two observations. If I look at now the clean main, the new data set, the variables have been renamed to day, uh, ID, day, and month. And again, we have our two observations. We do not use any data reduction here. We just simply rename the variables to something that makes more sense to us. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what if I wanted to give it some kind of label so that I know this ID represents uh, a patient's ID or a machine ID or some kind of identification number. Well, you can do that by using this label statement. The label statement works exactly the same way as your rename statement does, but now you say what the variable you want to label is called, equal it to some descriptive title. And I like to put it in double quotes. You can use single quotes and it will be exactly the same. Um, it does not matter really. I just use double quotes because it makes more sense to me. You can see the data step by using the same data and setting in the same exact data. You can do that and it works just fine. So here I've renamed or I've labeled my ID to be identification number, the month to be the month of the year, and the day to be the day of the year. The reason you I think it's best to use this label uh, statement is because if you're working with some kind of procedure, let's say proc freak data clean main, and I want to see a table of the month variable. If I run this code, it's going to show me the month values. Here we have two and eight. 
and we're going to know that this is the month variable but it's going to have this descriptive label up here that makes it really easy to know which variable I'm dealing with. What's the label of the variable? Uh, when you run a contents procedure on the data, you can also see it adds this new column right here under the variable attributes that shows what the variable's label is. And it's, very way, it's a very easy way to uh, organize and clean up a data set. The one last thing I'm going to show is if you wanted to clean up the variable's values, if you wanted to apply a certain format. And the way we do this is using this PROC format or format procedure. And it has a very simple uh, syntax in that you have to give some value name or a value for the format. In this case, I called it months. And you specify what the values represent. So a 1 would be January, a 2 would be February, and so forth, all the way through December. The syntax is always going to follow this, oops, this value, some name, and then the value itself here. In, case, in the case of numeric variables like a number, you're going to set it equal to and what you want the value, uh, excuse me, f value format to be. And then you end it with a semicolon. Then you run it. Once you run this format procedure, what happens in SAS is it creates what they call a format library. Uh, I can show you if you go to the Explorer tab down here, Libraries work library you're going to see there's going to be this new formats folder and it has months and the sum name I just introduced when I run this it's saved into there and now SAS will know that uh, a one for whatever we use the months format on is going to be January now there's one thing to point out in that we're not doing anything to the actual value in the data. We're not changing a 1 and now making it January. We're just showing, telling SAS that whenever SAS is going to show us some output that has this month's data, we want to see January instead of 1. We want to see the label of that value instead of the value itself. And in the data step to apply a format, we have to use this format statement. We do format the variable that we're going to format and now this format value from up here the months months and we put a little dot at the end when it turns green like this excuse me when it turns green like this you know now that it's going to apply the the format correctly and we end it with a semicolon when i run this and looking at the contents you'll see that there's now this formats column that tells me that SAS correctly applied my month's format to my month variable. And to see it in action now, remember that the first time we looked at this uh, frequency table for the month variable, it had the month label, but it did not have the months formatted. And now when I run it a second time, you'll see that the 2 turned into a February and the 8 turned into an August. Again, the label is there. And so this makes it a lot more uh, useful to me when I want to see some kind of organized output. So that's it. Uh, just very quick and simple uh, tutorial on how to reduce data steps, data sets, and how to work with uh, clean data. Thank you. Uh, see you next time.